Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Looks like we're about uh, practiced up and ready to head west into the mountains. It's gonna be a, a different trip for, uh, for this channel. Uh, I met someone, Will, through the YouTube channel. We got to talking and uh, he pointed us in the right direction where to go hunt some Roosevelt elk. So thanks again, Will, for, for everything that you've shared with us. And hopefully we can connect on this one and make it all come together. All right, stay tuned. I guess I can hear the elk bugling. Well, we pulled in the state park to camp, 27 bucks. Neither of us got that in cash right now. So we got 25 bucks, so we're gonna keep on heading down the road. Just looking for a campsite for the night. Derek's getting a little loopy, a little goofy, so we gotta find a spot fast. Boy, that is a tiny tent. Isn't it? It's quaint. Better than crashing in the vehicle like we did last night at a rest area. <laughs> Derek, which one do you want to shoot over here? Oh yeah. All right, two solid days into the drive. Took off on Wednesday. We're uh, ready for a break. We found a perfect spot to jump in. There's Kyle in his undies. Gonna jump in this lake. A little refreshing bath. That's refreshing. Well, Kyle, you think your one one tank of chainsaw gas is gonna do it if we got a tree down? Nope. <laughs> We're at the uh, drop-off point here, and we have a hike ahead of us. We're gonna try to cover about three miles this evening. Get back there, get tent set up. Hopefully, find a water source. It's been uh, droughty out here for uh, the last month and a half or so. There's actually a fire ban. We definitely need a good water source and a good campsite, but this is what it's like. Tomorrow morning is the opener of the elk season and hopefully we can connect. Derek, he's getting a little bit up in age, so he's got his little hiking sticks. Tastes good. Oh yeah. We're going back now. All right, well, 5.30 check-in. We uh, made it to camp. Nice little spot. We got a water source just back here. Enough to cook and get water and wash up a little bit. Some pretty uh, wicked terrain here. It gets better where we're going to go hunt. The it gets better where, when we're, where we're going to go shoot some bulls in the morning. Well, morning number one of the hunt. Derek and I just topped off our water bottles and we're gonna go see if we can cut some good elk sign. But it looks like Derek has quite the climb ahead of him. We'll see how he does here. Pressure what we've been seeing. Yeah, good sign. Just did some calls. Gonna hang out here for a little bit.
What were we thinking? Well, we're a little over halfway up this last hike for the early afternoon. And Derek found himself a big tree. It's a butte. Should be some big elk hanging up on top here, so let's get there. Well, day one, about two o'clock, first day here. Took us all morning to get up the, the west side of the mountain. We're at the very peak right now. Um, came up that side. We got another basin down here we're bugling into. Found a lot of tracks. A um, little bit of a wall, a couple rubs down on a bench down there. Uh, but couldn't get no bugling today yet. So I think we're going to hike this ridge back to our north towards camp. Um, bugle our way out of here that way. Find a good spot to go down. And A little afternoon update. Camp is at the bottom of this hill or mountain. Starting to slow down. It uh, was definitely in the 80s today. It's going to cool down after tonight, so it'll be a little easier hiking. But yeah, we're we're pretty played out. No elk encounters. We saw some decent sign earlier in the day, but I think we're going to get back to camp, save some energy for. Um, <laughs> The next eight days not play ourselves out on the first day but i'm gonna come up with a game plan for tomorrow and see what happens well good morning it is Day number two out in the elk woods. About seven o'clock right now, Derek and I are just getting set up for the day. We're uh, gonna try a, a slightly different area right away. We're gonna hike down this trail here and then cut down the, the uh, other side of this mountain and um, work that area, do some calling, and then maybe sneak back um, towards where we saw the good sign yesterday where I had that rub and all those tracks I took video of. Uh, the second half of yesterday, we hardly saw any sign, any fresh sign, no tracks, maybe some some old crap, but that was that was really about it. And it was some nasty, nasty stuff. We really uh, got our butts kicked last night. Well, about a 9.30 update. We just uh, came across here. There's a super old bridge. We did not cross it. We can't drop down and pop back up, but it's pretty pretty wild, the work that the, these people did back in the logging days to put these bridges together and roads in this incredible country. But we did see some decent elk sign a little bit ago where we crossed the stream and now there's this old road bed that's going to continue on for maybe three quarter of a mile that we're going to follow and just stop every so often and call and hopefully get a response but it looks pretty good it's a lot nicer than yesterday as far as the topography goes and uh, the sun is out unfortunately and it is super humid today. It's supposed to be a high of 67, which is down from 80 yesterday. And then it's highs around upper 50s and low 60s after today. So it'll be nice. But pretty wild country out here. And we're here to conquer it. Oh, yeah. Here we call this a little Washington cover scent. Grab some moss and just rub it up on you. 
We don't need any of that fancy store bought stuff. Extra stuff real good. You know, works good. Maybe put it on your hat and put it back on. Get extra camouflage. <laughs> Mountain fresh. Alright, Derek and I just had our first encounter with a bull. We stopped up on this little top here to let out a bugle and he never bugled back. He never bugled. We haven't heard a single bugle yet. But uh, he walked along the bottom of the ridge and then started coming toward us and then headed back to the west. So <laughs> Done with style and grace. Slippery when wet. 70 yards to the trail. It's a steep. 70. Well, more than all, day three here out in Washington on our Roosevelt elk hunt. Um, camped out at the truck here last night. Um, kind of worked the streams down to this area yesterday. Um, found a lot of sign. A couple Lots of rubs in here. Motors activity. Lots and lots of rubs in Wallows. I think we found a bedroom of a few bulls. We seen two bulls yesterday. Um, but it made more sense to climb out to the park a lot. And today we're going to drop back down in this this uh, bottom here along the river, hunt it back up, um, and hopefully get one today. Stay tuned, folks. All right, well, 8 a.m. update. I, uh, we started to get pretty hot. We climbed down, then partially back up this side of the hill by this stream down there. And in the process, got hot. I uh, changed shirts, took my release off, and uh, got way up here and realized I forgot it. And there's no way I'm climbing all the way down and back up to uh, go get it. So. I'll be doing the uh, filming this morning, and then after Derek harvests one, I'll uh, be able to use his release. I already got a spare back at camp. And we do have a spare back at camp, so I'll, I'll have one for tomorrow. In these woods, the uh, pine cones are dropping, so every once in a while you'll hear a crash, crash. And I don't see a good one right now, but these things are huge.
Here's some uh, Washington obstacles. Derek leading us the way again. Takes us on some pretty sketchy routes. Pretty nice day though. It's about uh, two o'clock now. No activity. So we're just uh, scouting out some new areas. See if we can find some sign. Well, it's 6.30 p.m., day number three. Back at camp right now, Derek and I got back about an hour ago. I decided to uh, hang back, wash up. This is our um, water source, source for everything out here. Nice little pool, we've been filtering this water. Um, but anyway, I decided to hang back, get a little bit of rest, and get packed up for tomorrow. Derek grabbed a, a meal and headed out to uh, go sit about 800 yards down the trail here and um, he'll sit about until 7 o'clock and make his way back here. But today was a good day, a lot of hiking. We cut sign fairly regularly today uh, and a good amount of fresh sign, especially where we had the uh, close encounters or the encounters at any rate yesterday but uh, no activity we uh, stepped it back on the bugling today not doing a whole lot of that and stopping stalking just just going slow through the woods doing cow calls every every so often so this is our first year doing anything like this so definitely learning as we go here and I'm sure as uh, we Continue on the next six days. We're going to learn more and hopefully uh, hopefully have some luck. Well, good morning everybody It's just before seven on day number four Derek just got done filling up at our old watering hole here uh, He may have a touch of GR the SO will be monitoring him closely over the next 48 hours but uh, we're going to drop down to where we had the bowl encounters on day number two and then work our way planning on working our way back to the truck if we don't have any luck and then maybe scouting out another area this afternoon and then camp at the truck so we have uh it's going to be a nice hike this morning we just have to descend probably what 400 feet yeah. if that and then it's a nice flat walk so nothing like that first day flatter walk yeah flatter walk and and then maybe I'll even go get my release when we get closer to where I had left that because we'll be passing in that vicinity today. But we're going to get rocking and rolling and see, uh, see what we can turn up today. So this is the story of this trip. We're calling, see if anything's back in these woods. And where's the wind going? <laughs> I'm not sure about this wind out here. Always working against us.
All right, Derek stayed up top. I uh, climbed way down. This is some wicked, wicked, wicked stuff. Uh, but check it out. Got the release back. Uh, I'm gonna go back and meet him. And then we're going to go to the truck and drop our gear off. And after that, the plan is we're gonna hike in and break camp down and then go uh, scout out a new area for the later afternoon. We uh, covered a lot of ground back here. It's been fun, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's been four good days back here. Maybe we'll come back on Saturday or Sunday to just give these elk a, a break. I mean, there's a sign back here. Who knows what we're gonna find the next couple of days. Oof, and you don't even have a pad. Pad. Well, that's where uh, Derek's sleeping quarters were right there. Roughing it, no pad, no nothing, just sleeping bag. Yeah, can't believe he even sleeps out here. Um, the the ground is extremely rocky, so I in particular had to use rocks to um, secure the corners because the stakes just simply don't go in. But like I said, there's rocks all over the place. We're on a mountain, makes sense. Yeah, we're on a mountain, I guess, but. It's about two o'clock, day four. I think we're gonna hike back to the truck and then possibly hunt an area this evening, see what happens and move on from here. We will probably have a good hour and a half hike out of here, loaded down and it's a warm one today. All right, here's our current situation, night number four. Derek and I are Sharing the bed, enjoying the beer. Just watched the presidential debate. And uh, tomorrow we're going to do some serious hiking. Oh, yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. So uh, just making some breakfast here. What I, uh, what I do before these trips is I dehydrate a bunch of food. So what we have here is dehydrated stroganoff, so hamburger, mushroom, sauce. I dehydrate the noodles, they rehydrate way faster. All right, let's see if there's any elk down in that valley. <coughs> now we wait. All right, well, the road is starting to get narrower and narrower. Got a little rock slide here, and Derek's going to move this off for us. Just trying to do my part. I didn't have your Wheaties this morning. Oh. Well, we were getting close back to the main road, um, and uh, hoping to get to the place where we're going to park and hike in uh, in about an hour or so. But we came across something that is just going to totally change our schedule for the day. The the road here is completely washed out. So, we don't have wings, so we're not gonna get over that one. We uh, might be stuck going all the way back around. We've been on this uh, big loop for a good two and a half hours now, so. We'll see if there's another option. Derek got the map out, but not good. Yeah, so that one's a little on the sketchy side. It's clearing the roads here. Oh, that, that was a was lame funny. one. Well, Derek and I have officially made it to the West Coast. We uh, decided to uh, take a break another day. By the time we got out of the, uh, the logging roads, um, it was uh, just getting to be too late. So we decided we're gonna get a hotel in town tonight and get up super early and uh, see what we can do. Uh, so Derek, what do you think? What the heck? 
He was just here. Oh, there he is. With a camera, you can't even uh, see you up there. I won't go too far, Kyle. Good morning, folks. Uh, day six out here, Washington, Roosevelt Elk Hunt. Um, kind of an off day yesterday. Took some forest roads, did some scouting and bugling, looking to locate bulls in a different area than we've been hunting. But um, we had a lot of rain yesterday. As you can see, the woods are pretty soaked today. We're walking in rain gear just because every bush knocks a bunch of moisture on you but uh we came back to the spot we've been hunting the previous four days but this time we're going up and over a mountain range to drop down a creek that's probably hasn't been touched for sure this year i would imagine probably many years but it butts the, the park boundary so it could be a fantastic spot to run in some rosies down there or at least that's our hope so stay tuned Stop and take a little break here, and Derek's gonna rip out a bugle. Let's see if we got a bull down there and get all riled up. So the elk sign that we were on a couple days ago is uh, down there a ways. So um, we're just continuing to make our way up the mountain here. Yep, so we're just going to wrap around here. And it's going to cut back up and then we'll get over it. Then we're going to hike down there somewhere and find a decent spot along a, a stream to get water. And um, then we're probably going to make about a four mile loop um, working a ridge. And um, it looks like there's some decent spots back there. So hopefully, just looking at the uh, Google Earth and inventory. So hopefully, hopefully, we get into some sign. We have not seen any fresh sign on the uh, um, probably three miles that we've hiked so far. There's old browse, but nothing. Nothing from this year, no, no, no sign at all. So hopefully that all changes when we get back there, or maybe all the elk are back there. But what we did want to do is give those elk uh, a break for a couple of days. So if we don't get into any sign back here, we're going to um, check out a couple areas and um, make our way back that way, and then um, we'll. Uh, what's that? So yeah, you can see it pretty good what's happening down here. Um, down low is where we're finding the sign and seeing some bulls. But they catch wind of you, they run up these drainages. So see this little basin in between the valleys? That's where they're going. So we're gonna give them a few days, hopefully they come back down. Hopefully something happens. We're in the final three, three and a half days of hunting. All right, we better get back to it. All right, just, uh. A little afternoon update we uh drop all of our gear here at this spot and we're going to um camp here tonight and this is a good spot we still have not cut any any elk sign at all um we're gonna drop down back here and work along that river i talked about uh that's gonna be um as a crow flies um, about two miles one way so we'll probably end up putting on five miles down and back and then um, camp here tonight and then in the morning we'll head down this way and there's uh, a couple open meadow areas that we're gonna check out and hopefully encounter something so 
hopefully all the elk are, are down where it gets a little bit flatter the it's pretty pretty darn steep up in here but um we're gonna get all of our stuff together for um a little afternoon hunt and hopefully be back here in time to uh get the tarp set up and and all that before it gets dark we'll see how it goes all right well we decided to cut off the trail and come down the hill and it is a hill but the <clears throat> we should cut cut back into that trail in about 200 feet of elevation according to onyx maps oh. well, i mean they used to pack wounds in the civil war with moss it's got antibacterial properties so oh fresh fill that thing up Well, I've been going for an hour, and we did find a wallow here. A little bit of disturbance over here, but it doesn't look like there's been any activity here for a while. All right, well, a little afternoon update. Um, walked a ways back here. Only saw a probably sign from one individual elk. Very, very, very little. Probably a cow. It was a smaller track. Or maybe a spike but um yeah it doesn't seem like they're using this area so we're going to uh be making our way back towards our gear and get our overnight tent situation set up with the tarp and uh we've got a game plan for tomorrow morning we're we're gonna kind of get back to where we saw more of that elk sign the first uh few days and see if we can get something out of there in the final final couple days here we uh stopped at our moss water source right back there um not a lot of water sources it uh is surprising back here we're uh in low country now and we thought these would be uh flowing a little bit better after yesterday's rains but anyway what uh we did is uh went ahead and filled up the three liter water bag we uh, made our meals for tonight and then uh, topped off our, our water bottles. We're not going to have um, probably a water source until tomorrow, um, 11 or noon. Uh, we'll be camping up in the high country tonight and then working our way down. So the, the water sources are going to be extremely limited unless we, I guess, find some pooling on a rock or something like that. But uh, we have a ways to climb and hopefully... We we're going to try to relocate um, our position from where we dropped the gear off if uh, if we have enough time. But it's, uh, you, you can feel the evening coming on. It's getting darker on this side of the mountain. But uh, the other side, you can see the sun way up there. We got about 800 feet to, to climb yet to get out of this area. But, I don't know, very little sign back here. And hopefully we'll hear some bugling tonight. Hey there folks, about 6 o'clock, um, we probably got close to about an hour and a half of light, but that's where we're trying to get to tonight, where the old girl needs to reprod. Um, probably about what, 600 feet elevation you said? Yep. So, we'll see if we can do it. We'll see how long it takes, it's 6 o'clock, <laughs> as you can see it's not very far, but um, we'll, we have to zigzag around to, to get up there, there's no way a person can climb up there, it's straight up and down. Yep, so we were, when we pointed out to the spot we wanted to get to, we were right down there. I mean, not far away, but as to scale up this damn mountain, it's a long way. And we were ultimately way over on the other side down there, scouting for elk sign. But yeah, we climbed up the mountain, climbed down the mountain, climbed back up the mountain. All in this afternoon, Derek's ready to go pass out. There you go, bed. We'll actually eat first. Looks like Derek's happy up there. Finally turned that frown upside down. But we made it to where we're going to set up camp tonight. Looks like uh, we can tie the tarp off to the two trees here and then probably use a couple rocks as a little lean-to shelter. And we got Derek's tarp we're going to put down. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't sleep on that. 
But yeah, it's a picture perfect evening. Beautiful oh, with the yeah, clouds. Clouds, yeah. the clouds moving in. Almost makes it all worth it. It does. Yeah, I mean, pretty cool experience. So I was able to, um, I, I do have a bar of service, a little connectivity up here. So I was able to check the weather and it's actually a low of 41 tonight. It's going to be the coldest night yet. Um, I didn't bring my long johns. Or the sleeping bag but we'll we'll make it work okay the dark is going to be setting in pretty rapidly on us here but we have our camp for the night pretty much set up since we know it's not going to rain and the wind is not going to be an issue tonight um it's a, a pretty simple setup i just have uh the two ends tied to trees over here and then we just put rocks on either end there and then we uh, can use a hiking stick as a, a center pole <clears throat> if it was going to rain or uh, if we were going to have more inclement weather. I'd probably just have, uh, I'd have this all staked out <clears throat> with the center pole and uh, basically it would serve as a, um, like a tent at that point in time. I'm um, pretty secure. I think I'm going to probably transition to doing uh, this style more more often especially when it's in the the bug free time of year because it's super lightweight super simple to set up you can set it up anywhere Well, good morning. Um, as you can see, sleeping out here on the ground. Derek is a snoring machine, and I just couldn't fall asleep. So it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I even tried doing toilet paper ear plugs. Those didn't work. And it just wouldn't stop. So I had to had to get out of there so I ended up sleeping out here for probably a few hours at the end of the day at the end of the night I should say but it was beautiful stars out here last night I did not get any video of that but uh, we're gonna start um, moving here and make breakfast and keep on heading down the ridge here and See what we can figure out. But yeah, I might be a little slower today. Well, I don't hear any more snoring, so Derek must be up. <laughs> Sun's up too, so we better get hunting. Pretty cozy in here last night. Yeah, check it out. So we dropped the ends over there. Because it was kind of drafty last night. So yeah, you can see I'm pretty close to Derek. And yeah, he kept snoring away. So you got to have these nice little cozy accommodations. And so I was out there in the cold. Climb up a mountain, down a mountain, back up a mountain. That guy gets real tired. Yeah, just be the first one to fall asleep. <laughs> or better yet, bring a friend that doesn't snore. Okay, we got uh, camp all packed up, made up our breakfasts, filtered water for the day. Dirk's going to start the morning with ripping a little bugle off the mountainside here. See if we get a big bad boy to respond down there and our work will be cut out for the day. Okay, little late morning update. Derek and I are at the highest peak we're probably going to be at on this trip. We're at uh, 3,800 feet right now. 
and we're going to um, descend a total of 2,000 feet today. Okay, quick update. We, um, we're going to hike around this way and drop down, but it is super, super steep. Steeper than we thought it would be by looking at the map. So we're just going to head back down the trail where we saw that sign, and then we can drop back in over here and then follow that river all the way back down there. Oh, Derek made it across. Rocks are super sketchy when it's wet like this in the logs when we're climbing up and down. But we're kind of in our final stretch back to the parking lot. I'm just going to come up here and uh, side hill it. But we, we've put in a solid day here. We've covered a lot of miles. Um, saw one side of crash shot. Uh, fresh tracks, smaller set of tracks, but there's still mud where the tracks were in the water. But it's a lot of country to cover and it's slow going. All right, we're getting to the final 120 feet or so of our final ascent of the day. Um, it's uh it's kicking our butt we put on a lot a lot of miles today we're seeing sign though where we're at cutting it off track every now and then but my goodness it's such a big vast area it's tough but we're feeling it our packs are heavier since it's been raining for the last three and a half hours derek's coming up All right, everybody, I think our 2024 elk hunt, for me anyway, has uh, come to a conclusion here. I started way up here and worked my way way back down, and now I'm heading back up the mountain here. Ultimately, I can kind of follow this drainage, pop back up on the road, and then hike back to the truck. I'm guessing that Derek is probably going to be about an hour, hour and a half behind me. His loop is gonna be a little bit bigger today. And hopefully he, he had some encounters. I came across some sign down where I was at. Nothing that uh, I could tell was really that fresh. So perhaps the elk are utilizing the area to the south um, quite a bit more. I mean, it's really nice in there. They have uh, all the food they could need, uh, secure bedding areas. And, um, you know, we, we just couldn't get on them this time. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a fun trip. It's been a challenge. And I think Derek and I will probably stop at a rest area or something on the way back and maybe do a little recap of the hunt and, you know, things we learned because I know I've learned a lot on this one. And, um, you know, maybe plan for another elk hunt for, for next year somewhere. Not sure if it'll be out here but uh but yeah it's been a lot of fun so thanks will for for uh all the advice and information that you have shared with derek and i it's uh, been really appreciated and even though we didn't connect with an elk um we we got into plenty of sign and you know a couple rookies out here playing around and we we had some fun and you know we got a heck of a workout every day so you know never can complain about that last day of the hunt we agreed before I took my little hike today um, that we we're gonna head back the night. We pushed a lot of pressure in this spot tonight. I don't think this bull would be back, but I've seen a, at least a five by five bull. Um, he was bedded down. I was just coming up into the area, checking wind, looking at my phone. I was gonna check a dry wall we found and all of a sudden, you know, look up and bulls running broadside 20 to 30 yards. Um, tried to knock an arrow quick and 
was going to yell at him and stop him. But by the time I got an arrow on him, I mean, it was at least 80 yards away, heading straight away. So I tried to put the sneak on him, probably followed him from his tracks for about two miles, but he didn't really stop. Um, but yeah, exciting last day of the hunt, but he headed up to the high country where I tracked him to. And I don't think he'll, we could maybe do a loop in the morning, but we're going to blow out of here. And stuff. All right, we're all about... I don't know, 18 hours into our drive home here. Um, just hit a rest stop here outside of Billings, Montana. Figured we'd post a little after the hunt video about our thoughts and some stuff we learned. I guess to recap, we didn't harvest a bull, but we saw at least two bulls that were different, but we saw bulls three different times, if that makes sense. The first one ran away from a bugle. We didn't hear any bugles on the whole trip or no vocals from elk. Um, could have probably got that one with a rifle if it was rifle season. The other two, we dropped down on one. Could have been, it was in bow range, but by the time I got an arrow knocked and, and stood up to pull back on it, it was gone. The wind had switched downhill. Um, that was kind of the story of the trip, just trying to deal with the winds that we encountered. A lot of swirly winds on these benches we were fighting the elk. And then the second one on the last day, um, yeah still hunting stopped messing around looking at onyx you know and look up and there's a bull 30 yards away quarter and away by the time i could get an arrow knocked it was already you know heading straight away and past bull range so two elk could have been for sure so even with a muzzle loader um probably could have got all three encounters with the rifle so it was a good trip regardless of not getting a harvest but some things i learned you know we found Benches with a lot of sign, you know, bulls and cow tracks. Never saw any cows, just bulls. Um, but we left that sign, you know. We, we kind of felt like, let's leave them. Um, went in there for two days in a row, and we're like, well, maybe we're just pressuring them, stinking it up. But I don't know if that's the case, you know. I think that last day, especially, I tracked that bull for two miles, found a few good spots, like crossings, you know, where they had to cross a big drainage that was worn down. You know look like a cow path and i wonder if we a lot of our hunting was still hunting moving you know um and besides that last day by myself we we're honestly probably moving too quick that i think they would have caught our movements regardless yep. before we even saw them so yep. we should have maybe tried to do a little more sitting on sign i think that could have put the cards in our favor yeah especially where we got into all that sign and then we we spent several days just hiking around and getting back to far out areas that are pretty inaccessible hoping that uh, with the lack of people back there there were going to be elk but uh, the sign that we we cut in those areas was very minimal we spent many many hours and put on a lot of miles kicking our butts for nothing and we could have been probably sitting on that uh the sign where we found uh, the second day so and, and what we encountered where we found sign is there's all these little drainages that come down to a main river basin and it seems like along that main river there's lots of these little wet meadows with uh, skunk cabbage um you know a lot of that uh devil's club devil's yeah. club yep. stuff that they're eating on browsing on and i think what was happening was you know the cows and bulls are down there at night feeding and then the, the bull would push his cows somewhere for bed and then that bull was working them wallows every time we encountered a bull you know it was anywhere from noon to two o'clock it seemed like so i think they kind of got restless midday came and, and checked them wallows we found i just went bench we were working all the sign on you know mile and a half two mile stretch and he must have had eight nine wallows wet and dry wallows that we could find and i'm sure there's more yeah. so it I rubs just, all over creation so if you're finding sign like that i don't know why we left it but in the future i don't think i would no. i think i'd camp on it try and still hunting but really slow like setting up on good sign for a couple hours to see if you can see him coming to a wall part of this problem is you know we're hiking in a mile got to hike back out once you're done four miles so just i don't know even maybe having the stuff on your back to spend mm -hmm. the night if you had to too yeah. um 
you know, more weight's kind of a killer for hiking some of them slopes, but we're yeah. used to Minnesota hunting, you know, white tails, looking for pinch points, you know, food sources and sitting all night on them. Yeah. You know, are still, we're not really still hunters. And it was a different hunt, yep. but it was fun. Yep, a couple rookies out here and learned quite a bit. Um, I think as far as our physical fitness, uh, you know, we, we spent time running and, and doing some training leading up to it. And it seemed like uh, we were in decent shape getting up and down the, the elevation, climbing up those slopes. So that, that didn't slow us down on the trip. Um, I guess the one biggest thing for me is I waited uh, probably too late to order the diaphragm and, and bugle and start practicing with that. So my calls would be good. And then, you know, just not consistent though. So I could have used probably another month or two of, of practicing um, with, uh, with the cow calls and, and bugling. But, me, me as well. Yeah. You know. And rookies, you know, we bugled right away. Maybe we should have been slipping through more soft cow calls. You know, that was a big bull, the first one, but I'm surprised it ran away from the bugle. But, but again, honestly, with that wind too, we were trying to time it where the thermals, the wind's coming up and uh, down where all the sign was, it was not consistent at all with the winds. It would be um, coming up slope and then we'd check 20 minutes later and be going down slope. And that second bowl that Derek saw had the winds been coming up slope, that very well could have worked out in our, our favor with, with that one. But again, it was going down slope and we came right down on top of that one and that's how it goes. Yeah, two opportunities, wasn't bad. It was a fun hunt. Yep, yep, it was a good good hunt, good experience. I think we'll be back for muzzleloader. Yeah, one of these uh, one of these years we'll come back with the muzzleloader and give that a shot. But I think that's about it. We uh, stopped at this rest area to take a little break and stretch our legs. And now I think we're gonna hit the road and try to get to Bismarck tonight another five hours well if you're still with us thanks for following along and hope you enjoyed the adventure see you next time comment like subscribe all right now this trip is complete the size of that thing it's got my food baby that thing is thick